My plane is pulling 100 G's. This glider has broken the sound barrier. And Jeb, if you crash my helicopter again, I swear I'm actually gonna fuck. All this and more on Flight Sim X, the perfectly bugged game. Ah yes, as soon as you start the game, you are immediately met with the beauty of a mid-2000s application, accompanied by an orchestra so good it would make Beethoven wish he never lost his hearing. From my nice up and close encounters with the scenery I found myself in, you could definitely tell this was a game from the mid 2000s. Like sure, this game had every place on the entire planet, but these places weren't exactly accurate to the say the least. Is ready to in order to fit on the vegetable based PCs that the mid 2000s offered, lots of things such as the game's scenery had to be simplified in order to even have the slightest chance of running smoothly. However, with great simplification comes great exploitation, or something like that. This is why, mere picoseconds after coming to this conclusion, I would speedrun through all the options looking for something that I could mess with. Since the devs had to simplify the game's scenery so much, maybe, just maybe, they also simplified the physics engine. I know it sounds stupid, but boy, did I find things I could mess with in this game. Imagine this, you are a high-level worker working for one of the most prestigious companies on the planet, Spirit Airlines, and you've just been tasked with the most impossible challenge of them all. How do we make more profit? We've already overcharged our customers far too much, and if we make working conditions any shittier for our labourers, they might g g go on strike. Ew! But... Be not afraid, for I have the solution. First up, you're going to want to go into the aeroplane select menu and pick the 747. Then, you'll go into the fuel and payload settings and just mash the shit out of your 9 key until your plane is about 32 times its own body weight, give or take. Upon spawning into the game, you might soon realise that the plane now really likes to collapse in on itself. How do we get out of this situation? I'll tell you how. By using a strategy that only the true alpha male pilots use. Cheating! Whoa, not that kind! Eh <laughs> I mean this kind. Anyways, go onto your map settings and enter in an altitude of 400,000 feet. No more and no less. Once you've made it to the lower thermosphere of the planet, simply pull your joystick back, turn it to the left or the right, and face the rudder in the opposite direction. Then, you wait. For about 20 seconds. Until you hit the part of the atmosphere that actually simulates air in this game. Your plane will begin to spin, and keep spinning, even faster, and faster, and faster. Oh yeah, and I also forgot to mention that you're basically trapped up there for the rest of eternity. All because the stupid physics engine doesn't know what to do with a 10 million pound plane at 400,000 feet. Instead, being bounced around like a Mexican jumping bean. Do better devs. Oh well, they kinda did, but you know what I mean. Anyways, while there are definitely a couple of things that need to be ironed out, the ability to profit of around 60,000 people in one flight is nothing short of a brilliant business strategy that will propel your company into the future. Spirit. Less money, more go.
Ah, good old Billy flying around in his tiny little ultralight. But what's this? He seems to have flown into the prohibited airspace. And now he's got a missile lock warning. He desperately tries to outmaneuver the rocket, but he's just too slow. What you just witnessed was a totally quirky and relatable issue that affects millions of people around the world. But the question arises, when so many people are affected, what can we do about it? Well, as my old pal me once said, problematic problems require problematic solutions. And you bet I found some problematic solutions. Here's how it's done. To set everything up, you're basically going to do what you did in the first bug. The only major difference now is that your plane is 3,676 times its own body weight. Anyways, moving on, once you've actually made it to the upper atmosphere of the planet, instead of jerking the joystick to the side, you aim it down and make sure to aim the glider down at the ground. If you spin out, you will not be able to recover. If you don't spin out, however, you will be greeted with your plane gradually gaining speed until it reaches 999 miles per hour, to which it can no longer tell you how fast it's going. Like this glider could easily be going twice at speed and I would have absolutely no way of proving that. Oh well, at least now you can fly around the world without the limitations of federal aviation laws that just get in your way. With all the ways that I've been abusing this game, you might think that I don't care for it, but oh no, you would be very very wrong. FSX is a gem of a game that treads where no other flight sim has treaded before. It's got enthralling gameplay, missions where you chase freaking UFOs, and most importantly, a still alive community. However, it looks like things are going to change soon, since Flight Sim 2020 already looks so much better, and Flight Sim 2024 is just around the corner, which offers just as cool gameplay missions as Flight Sim X. It means that the future of this Flight Sim is in your hands. The End Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon.